Good morning, traders and investors. Roger Scott here, senior strategist for The Trading Pub. It's Thursday, it's October 5th. Just to remind all of you, I'm not gonna be here tomorrow morning. I'm flying out to Houston. I'll be doing my video tonight and it'll be posted for you first thing tomorrow morning. I'll still be answering emails and following the market, but I'll be moving around the airport and so forth, so I'm not gonna be as accessible. Just wanted to remind you, if you're interested in the second part of this video, make sure to come to my VIP room today. It's Thursday, it's happening at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Monday through Wednesday, it's happening at noon. Today, it's happening at 11 a.m. Subscribe to my Telegram channel. You get lots of free trades. Just go to rogerscott.com forward slash Telegram and watch our video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Roger-Scott. It's Roger-Scott YouTube channel or YouTube Roger Dash Scott. You'll find it there. I post these videos at about 8.30 in the morning. You can find them there or you can find the link in my Telegram channel. Now let's begin. I try to do all that in a minute or less and I'm pretty successful. So it's about 7.50. Market's going to gear up to open up in about an hour and 40 minutes to be specific with you. And as we could see right here, we've got uh we've got very random price action the dow's down 50 points the nasdaq's up a little bit this is this is nothing to write home about and we can't make anything out of this so when you see price action like this the best thing to do is just say hey the market's opening up in a random way we are seeing influx of buying into the tech sector or technology qqq communication services and uh, selling pressure into the Dow blue chip stocks as, as evident by the NASDAQ closing positive and the Dow closing negative. All watch right now is on the QQQ, uh, excuse me, on the TLT, which has the biggest impact on the QQQ, the technology sector, because interest rates and technology don't mix. Uh, yesterday, we had a little bump up and the market gave us a little bit of support. Now we're down. It looks like we're just sitting right in this area. Um, to me, this looks like the Fed wants to really raise rates sooner than later, but the model is only pricing in like a 30-something percent chance. We'll go into that. The biggest sector you have to watch today, and uh, this is pretty important, is consumer staples. Why do you have to watch consumer staples? For two reasons. First of all, they are in the crappers, you could see here. But, but, look at yesterday's trading action all day. All day. This is yesterday. All day. They made a little low, and then they just kept going higher all day. And now, today, you've got earnings on Lamb Weston, Conagra Constellation Brands, and Levi's, which is not really consumer staples. But keep an eye on consumer staples for a pop today, especially if you're a day trader, because these stocks are going to report. I don't know if they're reporting before the open or after the close, but I imagine money's going to either be coming in or out of the consumer staples sector. Now, I personally don't want to, I wouldn't swing trade this because look at where it is. It looks horrible. But if there's a move to the eight-day EMA, it may be a good day trading vehicle if those stocks pop. Just something for you to be aware of right now, that there's multiple earnings. There's one, two, three earnings, all related to the consumer staples sector. As far as data today, you've got jobless claims and you've got international trades and goods and services. The big report's coming out tomorrow. That will either solidify or break up the jolts uh, and the ADP that are showing that there are a lot more jobs available than employees. And if there's a lot more jobs available than employees, then people could be asking for more money, and that's inflationary. So I, we'll see tomorrow if employment situation falls in line with the jolts and the ADP, or if it breaks the, uh, the trajectory that we're seeing right now, that there's more jobs than employees available. I wouldn't really look at the jobless claims really too much. It's been, it's been a really solid throughout this whole time. It's been right around the low 200,000s. So it went up to about 275, and then it just dropped right back. I'm really not expecting this to be a major uh, report, and it hasn't been. And if you see somebody making a big deal out of it, they just don't know what they're talking about it because it's been completely benign. Tomorrow, tomorrow, employment situation is going to be the big one. And Fed speakers. Now, let's talk a little bit about fundamentals, not, you know, fundamentals, fundamentals, and then we'll get into technical levels, okay? So three U.S. benchmark indices closed higher on Wednesday as the latest batch of U.S. economic data prompted investors to scale back forecasts for Federal Reserve tightening this year with focus now turning to Friday's job data. I don't know, what, I don't know how the focus could be turning away. I mean, Friday's data is going to be fo focusing on this exact question. So whoever wrote this, who wrote this? Alexander, <laughs> that's funny. 
now turning to Friday's job data, like Friday's job data is not going to be impactful on the Federal Reserve tightening this year. Hello, hello. It's all moving in the same direction. <laughs> so yesterday we saw Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, the, the big ones, rise over 1%, which gave NASDAQ a nice little push. Palantir, that company that we just recently got stopped out of, uh, climbed 5% following reports that uh, Bloomberg's st stating that the company is on track to win contract. And on the bear side, energy, energy continues to take take a big dump. I'll talk about energy today. Very un, uh, very untimely because we, we, we were really putting in a big, big chunk of cash into the energy sector. Uh, the energy was leading and now it's falling, but we want to see if it's going to continue falling or not. ADP National Employment Report Wednesday showed private payroll rose by 89,000 jobs in September below consensus, which means there's a lot more job openings. The smallest increase in over two and a half years, which means employees, not employers, have the upper hand right now, and that's inflationary. Uh, U.S. September Institute of Supply Management Service Index fell pretty much in line with expectations, pointing to a slowdown in the economy. At the same time, factory orders came stronger than expected. I mean, honestly, these are very small clues. The big, big deal is going to be the job, the 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 uh, job data tomorrow. There's only a 33% chance that the Fed is going to raise rates in December. I personally think that this should be over 50%, but what the hell do I know, right? Uh, today, we're looking at jobless claims. We're looking at a number of 210,000. Even if the number is 220 or 230, even 240 or 190, this number has been, the moving average has been super, super stable. We're also going to be looking at U.S. trade balance data. The big, 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 big uh, thing today is going to be Fed officials speaking. Mester, Hashkari, and Barkin and Dolly. And the th common theme that I'm seeing is inflation, what we're doing is working. It's gonna, inflation is going to be here longer than we can expect. And therefore, we're going to keep things tight for a little while longer. That's pretty much what I'm seeing. Europe, Europe is up a little bit. They're keying off of us, but it is at their lowest level in over six months. This is not a bull market. Remember bull market, bull market. We're having a bull market again, uh, like three months ago. And I'm like, I don't think so. Travel and leisure stocks uh, gave support to the market, which I don't see why we're not in the season right now. And uh, well, maybe because energy prices are going down, that could be it. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know. And 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 there's more. There's more employee. Maybe because job market is uh, is loose. I don't know. European stocks have received positive handover from uh, from Wall Street. They really are just king off of us right now. Japan closed higher, snapping a five day losing streak. Uh, they're keeping their eye on the U.S. Treasury yield, which is at a 16-year high. And when we're talking about it retreating, I just want you to see what, what, what retreating is and if you think this is retreating. Does this look like retreating to you? I mean, <laughs> I mean, and then two little blips. This doesn't look like much of a retreat to me, but hey, I'll, you know, if that's what you want to call it, that's fine. I don't know. I, I don't see that as a big retreat. I see it sitting at the 16-year at the uh, low or 16-year high, depending on how you want to look at it. As I mentioned, you've got Constellation Brands, Lamb Weston, and Conagra Foods, and Levi Strauss. I still have tons of Levi's uh, reporting today. Keep an eye on those, but I don't think they will be as big of a movers because Consumer Staples just doesn't have the market cap unless something really crazy happens. But keep your eye on it. It rallied all day yesterday. And before we leave today, I'll give you some day trading stocks. I'll give you actually four day trading stocks that I'm really liking right now a lot. And it's easy to find when markets are lower, it's easy to find good stocks to the long side. Now, let's talk about technicals, 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 technicals. So starting off with the SPY. All right, let's just go here. As you can see here, we're, we're bouncing off the 200-day moving average. And we're bouncing off uh, this support level which is holding up pretty well. If we can continue bouncing off of this, there's two scenarios. We can we can bounce off here, we can go high, we can break this level, and we can make swing highs. Don't see that in the cards right now. We can go to the upper part of this channel, which we've been actually building up. That is very, very possible. Or we can break down. I don't see a breakdown in the cards before tomorrow because it's not a major day, so I see more of a consolidation around here on the SPY. Um, for the market to look and find directional bias because it's having a tough time finding it. Now, I do believe we're going to bounce off the 200-day. We may even test the 200-day. 
Notice we're right off of it. We may test it and come back up, but I'm honestly not seeing anything major. For me to see, get excited again, I'd like to see us above the 432 level, and uh, that which would put us above the eight-day EMA, but we're not there yet. So right now, I would just say very choppy with not a lot of liquidity or volatility. A lot of liquidity, not a lot of volatility. QQQ is looking slightly better, and uh, communication and tech is what's leading the market higher right now. I like this up, up upwardy slope right here. I do. I actually do. Um, and actually, that's one of the reasons why I like NVIDIA right now. Sorry, I, I wanted to go into a specific stocks. NVIDIA is abutting the 50-day moving average. These large stocks, they have a way of getting onto institutional traders lists when they're at the 50-day moving average. Let me show you an example. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a little breather, a little shortcut. See, look at what happened to, to Tesla when it crossed the 50-day line yesterday. Not expecting that on Tesla today, but, but, and I'm not even loving the, I'm not even loving the price action on Tesla, but I am liking the price action on Nvidia. Now, yesterday, Nvidia was flat. I didn't even say anything about it. But today, if we have a stronger market and if we could trigger this 50-day line, which is at 449.67, 449.67, Forty-nine, quite a while up, we can see a good 10, 15, 20 point jump in NVIDIA. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but keep your eye on NVIDIA and this 50 day moving average. This f right here, four, whatever that average is, 448.53. I would just say 449, 448.75, 449. When it crosses above the 50 day EMA um, moving average, that's a good time to start looking at NVIDIA. Now let's go back. Sorry, I had to interject. My swing trading part took over. So I like the QQQ. I like where we're going. I think we may continue going this route, especially if bonds are going to be muted today. But keep an eye on this 100-day moving average. It's a resistance level right now. And we want to see it break through 100 and hit the 50. This will be a real sweet spot. And I'll be happy to see that. Not seeing that right now, though. But that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. On the Dow, we bounced off of this key support, which I drew for you months and months ago. We're below the 200 day. And right now I'm just seeing a chop shop until we see some upside in energies. Now, ETFs, let's talk a little bit about ETFs. And then I'll give you a list of my day trading stocks. So ETFs, let's look at short term sectors. First of all, notice, notice communication, retail, retail is consumer discretionary, right? Technology, healthcare, QQQ. And then you have consumer discretionary, which is so far away from retail. And then you have, uh, where is technologies up here? Now, if we go up to the last, this is just the last few days. Technology, 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 technology. All this is QQQ. So over the last week, without a question of a doubt, QQQ technology, the NVIDIAs, all those stocks are leading in the last seven days. And right now, we want to follow what the market's doing. Energies are no good right now. Utilities are no good right now. Russell's no good right now. Home builders are no good right now. The small caps, the industrial stocks, all growth stocks are not doing great. Meanwhile, consumer staples is starting to show up a little bit here. Basic materials, retail. But right now, the leaders are QQQ, technology, communication services, communication, consumer discretionary, technology. That's the QQQ, and that's what's leading right now, and that's where you want to focus your, uh, your, biggest, your, biggest, your biggest buying in the QQQ. Now, what sector do I like right now? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be very honest with you. And uh, right here, consumer cons communication, communication services, XLC. XLC. I like where it is right now. If we have a rally in the QQQ, this has been holding up a lot better than everything else. If we have a rally today or tomorrow, this will rally up. If not, it's going to drop, but it's been holding on better than everything. Matter of fact, look where communication is right now. And 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 you could just go with the QQQ. I mean, you could do the QQQ, which doesn't look bad either. So I'm going to give you two options. You could do the QQQ on that one, you want to go about, let's see here, you want to go about two weeks out and you want to hit the 357, okay? 
357 and go ahead and offset it with the 370 okay and if you want to do the XLC you're, you're pretty much going to get very similar bank for the buck ex except implied volatility is lower in the QQQ you can go right here two days before my birthday it'll give you it'll give you 22 days actually I'd go a little closer I'd go to yeah I'd go right here eight days if it doesn't do anything in the next two three days get out um and you'd probably uh, spreads are too wide spreads are too wide let's see we can do something here yeah there we go 15 days out you can do these you could do the 65 or you could do the 64 calls and I'm sure you can find some some love and some liquidity there now day trading stocks let me give you day trading stocks there's four stocks that I really like right now and by the way I think most of them are QQQ stocks let's see uh this is in consumer staples but it's in the Nasdaq 100 okay and it's more of a consumer discretionary people don't buy they buy everything at Costco I love Costco right now if Costco breaks above this level just a little bit above where it is right now I would be buying Costco maybe at around four here 470 it's 570 573 573 uh, F V F N this stock right here Fabronaut this stock looks like it's rocking and rolling it wants to go higher it's not a bad day trading stock this one I've been talking about yesterday all day look at this thing this thing looks like it wants to go higher and lastly JBL it's easy to find strong stocks in a weak market because you could see where the action is uh, so those stocks are the best Costco uh, FN CBOE and JBL I think I've given you enough now folks you know what everyone loves a good bargain everybody loves a good bargain a discount a sale well you can also find these things on sale in the stock market if you know where to look and it just so happens that I know exactly where to find hidden gems in the corner of the markets that's consistently overlooked and team with valuable opportunities trading for pennies on the dollar no I'm not talking about high-risk gambling or convoluted trading strategies my revolutionary approach is based on a pricing mismatch a pricing mismatch I tell you and I've discovered this mismatch and it's a gold mine allowing traders to target significant moves in options after just tiny little one percent moves in stocks one to two three one to three percent moves in stocks shifts in the underlying asset learn to trade options on the down low very very small moves in stock that can give you big big moves in the options and I'm going live at 1 p.m eastern time today to talk about all of it in great detail show you some examples click the link below and join me for some dirt cheap options hunting all right and if you behave yourself maybe I'll even give you some freebies make sure to like this channel Roger Dash Scott YouTube channel. Email me at roger at rogerscott.com and subscribe to our Telegram channel. And I'll see you at my VIP room at 11 a.m. today. It's Thursday. Bye.